Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm a little tired today, so I'm gonna be talking really, really slow. I know I'm usually hype, woohoo! But I have had, the last two days have been kind of extreme. I may be over exaggerating. But if you're new to my channel, subscribe, like, share, hit the bell for notifications. And what we're gonna be talking about today is four simple things that you should know if you're a company driver and you want to become an owner op. So stay tuned. Number one, the first thing you want to know, if you are a company driver, you should get in the habit of which state has the lowest fuel prices. I know this is subject to change, but keep in mind that you want to always have in your mind which state has the best fuel prices. If you are now uh, thinking about becoming an owner op you need to get in a business mind as well so treat the company truck run the company truck as if it was your own business to prepare yourself for your own business I cannot stress this enough I've, I've heard people say it when I was a company driver but I didn't get it until now because once you're out here no one is holding your hand period so get in the habit of the four things that I'm going to tell you guys so the first is like I said learn which states have the best fuel prices for me currently I run mostly the northeast region and the southeast region so when I'm running from Florida to maybe New Jersey I, I don't go any further than New Jersey I found that South Carolina gives me the best fuel prices with my discount and for some reason it's always in Florence, South Carolina. So I'll stop there to get fuel, head up to New Jersey. When I come back, I'll stop to get fuel again. Florida is okay, Atlanta is, well, Georgia's okay, but I found that South Carolina, best prices. When I run from Florida to maybe Texas, Mississippi has the best fuel prices. So I'll stop in Mississippi. So it doesn't always work out this way. Uh, it just depends on how hard you're running, but you want to find the best fuel prices for sure. Depends on how small your tanks are. I have small tanks. I get 200 gallons. So I'm having to fill up every day and a half because I don't allow my needle to go past half the tank because once you start, to, if you do that, I'm told that, you know, dirt and soot from the bottom of the tank can start getting into your lines and that can cause other problems. And I don't want that. So I just try to, not saying that I haven't gone past uh, the half line I've had, I've been in situations where I'm just like, yeah, I'm not getting ready to pay 304 for, for, per gallon for fuel. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to go a little bit further down or further up. So yeah, that's rule number one. Number two, I had to write it down because my brain is shot. I hadn't gotten much sleep in the last two days. Uh, and because I haven't gotten much sleep, I end up losing my spare master key to my truck and my lock to my trailer. I went to unload, open the doors, put the key that was inside the lock down on the trailer rail, forgot it there, drove off. So, uh, that is number one. Number two is please keep proper, just for your records, not saying for the company, because they keep all, they should already be keeping records on the truck maintenance, but you should get in the habit of keeping proper, organized, detailed records on the company truck. When did it get an oil change? How many miles 
at that time that the oil change happened and when is the next oil change keeping up with dot inspections anything that's done on the truck you want to keep proper records if you had to have a fuel filter change or it was something major like a water pump you want to keep detailed records of those things who did it where it was done the reason why i say that is because if you decide to trade the truck in or you'll know that okay my truck had this done on it when you know two years ago so i should be good for let's just say an alternator for another i don't know five years that's something that you don't have to worry about you have it in your mind you know that that is what happened to the truck you're able to keep up with it and it and it, it goes you know like if you trade in a truck or you want to buy a truck you you will want proper records on that truck what was done to the truck so keep that in mind I, I i can't stress that enough you want to keep proper record maintenance on the truck all right every truck is not the same i know they tell you maybe every thirty thousand miles to get an oil change um the older truck i would suggest less miles maybe 20 to twenty five thousand. you want to keep up with those things you don't want to drive your truck into the ground this is how you make your money so if you take care of it, it will take care of you. All right, so I hope you guys got that. Number three, it is, um, let's see. I wrote it down, my handwriting is crazy. Uh, mm -mm. Trip plan. That should have been number two. Trip plan, proper trip plan. I know when I was a company driver, and you guys know I ran for FFB, I ran the same routes pretty much day in and day out. So I got those things memorized, and it, it kind of got me into lazy mode, where I really didn't have to trip plan. I, okay, 700 miles, I know that's going to take me a day and not even a half. Let's Okay, we'll just say a day and a half you know based on traffic and all the stuff where i'm going um so yeah i can get there on time but when you're on an op and you're running on your own and not only that with companies they can look at your clock and see if you have enough time to make it so they are not just you're not just out there willy-nilly in it you think you are but you're really not so you kind of have someone guiding you. But out here, you pick your own loads. So by you picking your own loads, you have to look at your clock to see if you have enough time. You have to include traffic, road conditions, weather, all that stuff, right? You have to check the weather. That's a must. Not saying you don't have to check the weather as a company driver, but most company drivers can't refuse the load there's their forced dispatch out here you're picking your load so you if you know upper new york they're getting ready to you know they're getting ready to maybe shut down for a snowstorm you don't want to pick a load going into new york like that's just common sense so it all goes hand in hand when you trip plan where are you going to be shutting down do you have enough time to get to where you need to go because you have your loads lined up for the week so you have to plan accordingly. You're running a business. I know a lot of people may think that, okay, we're out here in a truck. We're sitting behind the wheel. We don't really provide customer service, but I do. I'm sorry. I treat my business um, and I think like a customer. If you agreed to February 14th, 9 a.m., then load needs to be there February 14th, 9 a.m. That's just me. I look at it like that. I don't look at it like, okay, the load. Uh, yeah, I know you guys have seen my TikTok video to get there when it get there, but that's entertainment purposes only. I'm a businesswoman at the end of the day, and I want to get the load there. And it's a challenge for me anyway. I, I just, I, I feel defeated if I don't get a load there on time, which has only happened to me once since I've been out here. And that was actually my first load because I got the load the day of after the fact that it was supposed to be there at nine and I got the load at 11. 
so it wasn't really nothing I could do about that so I didn't beat myself too much up about that but yeah proper trip planning where you're gonna shut down uh, what time you plan to shut down and stick to and stick to it in order to get to your destination on time I still do the same thing that I did when I was a company driver which is why they didn't want me to go I take a 10 and I'm up and at it I don't fuck around out here period I mean unless my appointment time is confirmed and it is firm for the next day maybe 4 p.m then you have no choice of course I'm not going to start my clock if I'm 40 miles away from the customer but you you make adjustments and in between those times is when I'll do my YouTube videos, which is now I have time to do a YouTube video because I don't have my next appointment is tomorrow. And um, so pretty much I got a whole day to entertain you guys, give you guys some tips and all that stuff. So that should have been number two. I gave you number three. So four, get in the habit of asking for receipts. I never did this when I was the company driver. I feel they see it on their end, the company did, what I need a receipt for. I'm W-2. Now, I need a receipt. Receipt for showers, receipt for food, receipt for fuel, everything. Anything that has anything to do with my truck, I need a receipt. I wasn't in the habit, so sometimes I do forget when I get to the fuel and I to the, when I go in fuel and I don't go inside to get a receipt. I hate when I forget now because now I have to remember that I can get it from the app. So when I go on my home time, I have to set it up to the printer and print out the receipt because I, I just like hard copies of everything. I like to be able to tally up my things that way. But again, I could I could forget to actually, so that means I have to really go in there and check each app whether it's Love, Flying J, Petrol, TA, whatever it is and that could be tedious, it's just unnecessary work when I was right there and not only that, I could use their paper and their ink. Now I'm going home burning up my, my printer when I could have got the receipt right there so at, get in the habit of asking for your receipts, I'm telling you I know they say with the scales, you can do it from the app that's cool too, you know it's, it's, it's a time saver, but you still want your receipt so if you got to go inside to get your receipt and, and again you can probably keep it on the app i haven't used the app yet it didn't work for me the first time that i tried to use it so i just gave up on it and i don't really have to run through scales as much because i have a, a low um weight scale for the drives on my truck so that saves me a lot of time and money i was just fortunate enough to buy a truck with that but yeah get in the habit of asking for receipts for everything i'm telling you because I'm still, I mean, I've been out here since November, but I did go home for a period of time. So this is my actual first month running without going home, February. But get in the habit of asking for receipts now. You are owner op, you are a business person, you need your tax taxes whatever benefits if you got a good tax person they're going to ask you for those receipts for everything you know you want those tax breaks so receipts are important all right so that's pretty much it i'm going to go over the four rules again one which states have the best fuel prices start studying those things now as you fuel as a company driver two trip plan i can't start to really get in the habit of trip planning now three um what was three? Oh, Lord Jesus. oh keep good records maintain good records organized records on um, the maintenance of your truck the company truck now it's as it's just a practice it's, it's just your homework and four always ask for a receipt all right I give my videos raw and uncut because I don't have much time to edit like I used to. So please forgive me. I'm hoping to get better with all the hiccups and stuff like that. It's, it's weird sometimes talking to a camera. But I hope I drop some jewels 
I want to see everybody succeed. I want to see everybody win. So please, company drivers, if you decide or you're going to decide to become an owner, operator, or lease, purchase, whatever it is your plans is, keep these four things in mind. All right? If you guys got any questions, any comments, drop below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and I'm out.